Welcome back to another video. Today what we're going to talk about is the kind of breakdown over a number of different factors that you'll see in a rugby player over the course of a season. This will be very, very true for a rugby player. It's actually taken from a few different players we have and their data. What I'm just going to look through is the difference in strength from the start of the season to midway through the season to the end of the season, their conditioning values and then their speed and power values at the same points. What we'll talk about mainly is like a forward just purely because these three players were all forwards but this is going to be pretty much the same across all positions on the field. Even if you're not a rugby player this is going to be really applicable for anybody who has a defined in season and off season in their particular sport. What's particularly going to be uh, of interest to most people is the degradation of strength and how that kind of affects the speed and power but also the kind of small things that happen in a season that, where you might see you gaining speed and power or gaining strength or gaining conditioning due to things you might not necessarily have thought about. So this is the first graph we're looking at now. This is a combination of strength, which is the blue line, speed and power, which obviously aren't the same thing, but for this purpose, we'll talk about them as being similar, is a red line and then yellow is your conditioning, right? So we're going to start at August. So what you see at the start of the year is Strength numbers are at their highest point and power and speed numbers are at their highest point. All this is, is you could just take it as like a percentage grade on the, on the left hand side. What you do have though is quite low conditioning at the start of August. For most rugby teams, their pre-season conditioning will start some way mid through July. Then by the 1st of August, they're really hitting aerobic conditioning quite hard. Their strength work usually tapers off at the end of July. They'll usually test at the end of July or first week in August. And therefore you get these kind of super maximal numbers for strength and power or speed due to the fact that they're running that percentage off last year's numbers. So when we look at strength, what we initially see is as we get a drop off between August and September, we get the corresponding inverse uh, increase in aerobic conditioning. This isn't anything to do with uh, an interference factor or, or anything like that necessarily. There are a number of things going on here though. So the first thing we have going on is that all our, our kind of training capital, those blocks of training capital like Gerf will have talked about before, uh, all of our intention and effort and our recovery ability is going into aerobic conditioning. So we've got guys running three, four times a week at a various amount of, of kind of volume, speed, pacing, uh, and they're really putting a lot of work into getting very, very high aerobic values, changing their blood values around a small bit. At the same time, a lot of those players are going to lose weight. So particularly for the, the heavier athletes in the pack, they're going to have done a lot of strength work in the off season. And this initial burst of aerobic work will cause them to drop weight fairly quickly over the course of kind of like five or six weeks. Obviously, as most of you will know, when you're doing strength training, being heavier is very, very beneficial. And so this kind of dropping of their strength stimulus, as well as an increase in, in overall activity due to the amount of aerobic work they're doing is really, really clear from this graph. One thing you might have noticed, though, or one thing you mightn't think about as much is we often think during these pre-season bouts where we're running players a lot or we're doing a lot of aerobic work and our fitness is getting much higher, people tend to think that their speed gets higher, right? In fact, your speed tends to drop off at the same kind of line or runs concurrently with the drop off of strength. So because you're not in the gym, because you're not moving heavy weights quickly, your speed numbers drop down. The odd time we will get players where their speed numbers increase during a, a pre-season block. So those kind of six or eight weeks of hard running and that's due to more than likely just a severely untrained speed pathway and also they're probably dropping a bit of body weight as well, which obviously helps hugely with speed. If we take a standard rugby season over here, running September through to December, then you usually have a week or two off in December, and then January through kind of March or April, depending on how the season goes, you'll see strength numbers decay, power and speed numbers decay, and they'll keep decaying until December, usually around the second or third week in December. Running along with this, we tend to get aerobic values go up quite high. So aerobic values in September, October, November are quite high. They may drop down in November, December. Why is this? Well, there's a host of factors, right? You're, you're now playing games a lot of weekends. So it could be two weekends a month or three weekends you're playing games. 
and you don't have that same concerted effort into specific aerobic training, obviously your race pace stuff, your actual match fitness goes through the roof, but for particular values, depending on what you're tracking with their aerobic work, it's very likely they might decay down. Also, you're now three, four months into a rugby season, it's very likely you'll have picked up some knocks. During those times when you pick up knocks, uh, whether that's a pulled hamstring, whether that's like a stinger in your shoulder, these kind of moderate, mild injuries, they tend to keep players out for a week, 10 days, two weeks at most. During those times, they're usually able to either go to the gym or do a small bit of running, but they're not really training hard. So you get that decay over the course of just normal match play. You see it again in the second half of the season from January to April. You get that decay in aerobic conditioning. Um, and that's it's very, very likely coming due to those knocks and small injuries you pick up, those sessions you're missing out on, uh, all because you're kind of sore and not able to train quite so hard. So what we see then around December, January, we talked about that kind of mini break a lot of teams have. Sometimes that mini break could be up to four weeks long. We tend to see that bump in conditioning numbers and the bump in speed numbers. Why is this? Well, speed numbers are we're able to actually go and do sprinting drills during training because we're not constantly prepping for a game. The conditioning, we're back on the field, we're running a small bit more, we're probably doing a few extra Saturday and Sunday sessions because we don't have games at the weekend, and we're just getting those favourable values back up again. We're getting those proper training sessions in rather than it being this kind of scramble to, to get a team thrown together or to get things tactically right. We have three or four weeks where players get actually fitter, and at the same time, they get actually uh, faster because they're recovering some of that speed and power that they'll have lost over the last few months. Then going into the second half of the season, it's very much the same story. So we'll have had our small bump in aerobic conditioning, our small bump in speed and power. Speed and power will decay at roughly the same rate we saw it decaying at the first half of the season. Conditioning won't decay at the same rate. The injury piece and the missing of sessions is obviously a bigger uh, factor in the decay of conditioning in the second half of the season. What we then see is around April, March, April, that time when games start finishing up, players take a few weeks off and they go into an off-season phase. And this, when you're looking at the graph, is where things go a bit mental. But what we basically get is all the focus on rugby-specific work stops. A lot of time players will take a week, two weeks, three weeks off training completely, and they go back to gym work, so all-out strength work. When we're talking about strength work here, we're talking about 1RMs, 3RMs, 5RMs, and driving those numbers as high as you possibly can. Most of the time, we'll have around three months if we're lucky. Uh, three months, 12 weeks is plenty of time for a rugby off-season block. So a lot of the time we have rugby players with us, it's eight weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks we train with them for. They get their strength numbers as high as possible. We get their power numbers quite high in the second half. And then we get them to a level where their conditioning is just good enough that they basically don't feel like falling off a cliff when they go into August. So to talk about their strength numbers quickly and why you might see that really quick increase in strength but a kind of decaying of power and speed until around June, mid-June, July. Well, the first time they go into the gym, they start gaining strength. They start gaining capacity in the weight room. So they start with their 10s, they start with their 8s, they start really pushing weights hard from week to week. So linear progression, driven hard, usually in a fairly competitive environment, we, in, we get that almost instantaneous spike. Because players at the start of a strength season are doing so much capacity work, they're doing so many hard sets of squats, pulls, presses, rows, you cannot do the strength or the speed work at the same time. The speed work has to be done when players are fresh and players just aren't going to be fresh if they're doing four sessions a week of high capacity strength training. Where the speed and power work usually comes in is in the second half of the off season. They'll have built some sort of a base. Those tens and eights and sixes they will have been doing in the exercises are now going in towards sixes, fours, twos. They're doing less sets. The weights are much, much higher, but the barbell is moving relatively quickly and they're not getting fatigued to the core in every single session. Once we start to drive that speed and power work at the same time as our strength work, 
We'll usually give that a number of weeks, so probably two or three weeks where those things are running concurrently. They're both being pushed fairly hard. We obviously prioritize the speed and power work. We can then start bringing in some low level aerobic conditioning work. Obviously, we have the whole month of August to use in terms of getting players fit and getting players uh, aerobic systems working very, very well. But the main thing here is if we get a prop forward who's going in at 125 kilos, if he's fairly aerobically fit, he can hold on to a lot of the 125 kilos. He can get through the month. He might come out at the end of the month as 120 or 122 kilos. If we get a 130 kilo prop, who is in terrible aerobic condition and they go to their first running session on the 1st of August, they'll vomit after that session. They'll probably vomit after every other session for the rest of the month. And we're lucky if we get an athlete coming out at 115 kilos. So this is really what you want to think about. Although the aerobic work isn't the main priority here, what the main priority is is getting faster, stronger, more powerful. We need to make sure that we can hold on to those speed and power and strength gains later on. So we give them a small bit of an aerobic base. So if this is something you're interested in, I know we're kind of at the wrong end of the year here, but a lot of teams are still up in the air as to what's happening next season. If you're interested in an off-season program that's actually properly planned, programmed, it will take your numbers into account. You can go and look at the Seek Strength Off-Season Field Athlete Program. They come in different blocks. You always start at block one, then you go to block two, then you go to block three. Each one is four weeks long. It's four sessions per week. All of your core work and accessory work is included in it. And they're very, very well used at this point. We've probably had maybe 600 people through those specific blocks at the time of this video. It would be very productive for you to go as a rugby player or a soccer player or a GA player or American football player and plan your off-season with one of these blocks. If you're interested, click the link below and we'll talk to you soon.